Let's talk about networks. In order to work with Hack the Box, we are going to be connecting to the VPN so that we can access this machine on a private network. We're going to see that the machine has a 10 dot address. So if you ever see an IP address that starts with 10 dot, then that is categorized as a private IP address. All of the 10 dot sub range are private IP address. There's no computer on the public internet that has a 10 dot address. 192.168 is another common one. Like if you've ever tried to configure your router at home, a lot of times it's configured as 192.168.1.1, but that's a private network but you'll notice this gets into like subnet masks i'm not going to get into all of that but basically the range of 192.168.0.0 all the way up to 192.168.255.255 are private addresses you will never find a computer on a public network that has that private address if it's 192.167 that's not in that range so that actually could be on the public internet so this is a good thing to know and a good distinction to make because you'll notice this has given us an IP address to connect to. But the only way I'm going to be able to connect to this machine is if I am on the same network, right? Because it's a 10 dot address, meaning it's a private IP address. So the only way I could get access to it is if I was on the same network as that computer. And I'll show you. So right now I could try accessing it from my local network. So this is just a terminal running on my computer, which is just connected to my local network at my house. And I could try pinging this address. But there, I already know there's there's nothing on my local network that has that IP address. So I'm not going to be able to get access to it. So the way that we get access to it is via a VPN, because a VPN essentially allows us to uh, run our connection through some remote network. But uh, let me let me try to draw a picture really quick of like private versus uh, like local networks. So let's say we are at home. This is our home and we have a laptop and it is connected wirelessly to our router. This router, for instance, has a gateway address of 10.0.0.1. This means all devices on our network are going to connect through this specific IP address. And then this router is going to assign us an IP address that's within that local network. So it might give us 10.0.0.2. And so this is the address of our of our laptop. We might also have a phone running on the network that's connected via Wi-Fi, and it's going to get the IP address 10.0.0.3. For instance and so yeah all of this is through dhcp but we're not going to get too much into the details this is just like the basics of your local network but now you could have this even without the internet you could actually have a local network at your house that's not connected to the internet but all of these devices are able to connect to each other if we want to get access to the internet which is a black box, <laughs> the black box internet. Uh, we have to do that through yeah and this is also known as a, a lan or a local area network and Again, un unless we're connected to the outside world, it's just it's just internal. But in order to get access to the internet, we need to go through some sort of ISP or internet service provider. My internet service provider, for instance, is CenturyLink, and uh, I pay them a monthly fee. <laughs> they have a physical wire that actually connects to my home. Like they they have fiber, so there's a pole sitting outside, and it connects a wire, and that wire comes into my house. And then I have the, I forget what it's called. It's some box that the fiber connects to. And then that is actually connected in turn to my router. But this is what gives my local network access to the internet. Things on the internet do not have private IP addresses. They have a public IP address that, that we can get access to. Uh, let me find the IP address for, for Google. If I ping google.com, uh, we can see that my computer somehow figures out the Google's uh, IP address for me is 142.250.69.238. This is a public IP address. This is accessible to anyone in the world that's connected to the internet. If my computers in my home network are trying to get access to Google, because it has that uh, public IP address, that is accessible via the internet. So like my computers are gonna go through my ISP, hop onto the internet, and then eventually they can get access to that because it is a public IP address. Okay, this private network can exist anywhere. So my house has a private network. If you have a router at your house, you probably have a private network too. If you work at a company in a building, they probably have a private network as well. But the internet is basically just like a connection, a collection of private networks. And so for us, and when we're trying to do our hacking here, we specifically are connecting to Hack the Box. And Hack the Box is available on the internet, but the machine that they spin up for us is within their own local private network. And so the IP address that they gave me is this 10 dot address. It's 10.129.110. 
And internally, any machine running at Hack the Box on this network that they have spun up could access that. But because it's private, my computers don't have access to this. But what we can do is we can use a VPN. So they actually have a VPN server running. That VPN server is exposed to the public internet. So my computers can connect to this VPN server, but this VPN server is also connected to the local network of the machine that they spun up for me. So by connecting my computer to their VPN, it goes like this, it goes through the internet, it goes here, it goes here. Now, all of my traffic is tunneled through that VPN. And because the traffic of my machine is tunneled, now I can access the things on their local network. Yeah, I mean, that's that's great here because this is a virtual private network. And once I've connected my machine, my machine to it, I have access to that virtual private network and any of the any of the machines that are on it. Yeah. And so exactly like Tuplink has summarized here, we're not going to cover it here. But the other thing to learn about is the subnet mask. Basically, this right here describes this range and this here describes this range. But yeah, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> Did I just dox myself? No. So I didn't write my IP address down. I wrote down Google's IP address. And then that 10 dot address, like I said, is the IP address of the machine that I'm trying to connect to. And like, that's why it's okay for me to expose even my local IP address. Like anybody can know my local IP address because they can't get to it because it is my local network. That's why when you see people configuring things or connecting to things locally, it's totally fine to expose a 10 dot address or a 192.1 six eight address because there's no way for anybody else to get access to that my home network technically does have a public ip address um, and, it, and that's assigned through my internet service provider and that's something that i wouldn't want to leak because if i leaked that then people would could potentially try to get into my network if they knew my public ip address what's nice about my internet service though is all i have to do is reboot my modem and then i get a brand new ip address not all isps work that way and depending on who your ISP is or what you're doing, you might actually get a static IP address that never changes. And then there's other things you have to worry about there. Hack the Box gave you a local IP, but by coincidence, could you have a machine on the same local IP, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, I mean, that's a good point to make is they gave me this IP address and it's possible that I have a machine on my network with that same IP address. And if I wasn't connected to the VPN that they provided, when I tried to ac access this IP, I'd be accessing something on my local network. But because inside the virtual machine, I am connected to the VPN network that they provided, now I will have access to that machine. So if I copy the IP address, we can see, do I have access to this machine? And so the first hacking command you'll learn about is ping. I kind of showed it with Google, but ping is a command that will attempt to see, is this server reachable? So if I ping it and it responds, then that means this server is reachable from the machine that I'm running the command on. But yeah, so in this case, we know we we're, we know we're we're connected. I am not going to explain ICMP, but I, ICMP is the protocol that is used when you do a ping. And so over here, that's why if I try to ping this address here, it just times out because over here I'm not connected to that VPN. I don't have access to it over here. It's possible to disable ping on your server, and sometimes that's actually a good security practice if you're in charge of a network or in charge of machines. If you don't need to ping the machine internally, you just dis disable the ICMP protocol. And so then it makes it harder for hackers to even know, well, is this machine up? Is it accessible? Uh, you, you can still hack a machine or attempt to hack a machine that doesn't have ICMP or ping running, but that's a good point to make. Not every machine is going to have ping running. In our case, the machines are meant to be hacked. So a lot of them have, have ping running. Don't disable ping for your IT team. Yeah, I have ping disabled on my firewall for my local network. Like, I don't want anybody to be able to ping my home. But yeah, I'm very knowledgeable for a new packer. That's the thing is like, I have, I have cursory knowledge, but once it gets into like finding exploits and, and anything else, like that's where it's, that's the stuff I need to learn about. When I was younger, I wanted to be a hacker. Now I'm just a boring web developer. It's really funny when you, when you start to learn about the the career and everything. As far as I've seen, there are a lot of hackers that want to be software developers. <laughs> and then there's a lot of software developers that want to be hackers. I started learning about the field of uh, AppSec or application security, because there, there's a lot of different fields that you could get into in the field of cybersecurity. So like AppSec isn't necessarily penetration testing. AppSec is all about making sure that your code base is secure and you're using secure coding practices. And so if I wanted to get into a cybersecurity career, as far as my research has told me, AppSec is probably would probably be the easiest for me because I already know how to write software. I know how to architect things. I've already 
learned about the security of software and, and other various things like that. And so uh, AppSec pretty often is a dedicated role at a company where you often work with other software developers to make sure that they're writing secure code and they're, and they're keeping things secure. Yeah, I think it's, I think that's the thing is once you start to get into it, it's like any other job. <laughs> it's like, it takes all the fun away. Like you're working at a company and you have a boss and everything else. Okay. Okay. 